All right, the time has come. We're gonna get back on the uh, utility trailer project here down the home stretch. We're building this uh, trailer to become uh, usable to haul our side-by-side. -side. We have a Kawasaki KRX. In fact, that is actually a picture of our side-by-side. -side. Um, and we wanna be able to haul it and my son's Can-Am Maverick on here at the same time. So everything is done, complete up to this point. So the next thing we need to do is get the wood deck on. So what we have is a deck in between here that's 77 and a half inches because we've added this two by two angle on either side. And I want to run two by tens across here. And for those of you doing the quick math, two by tens, nine and a quarter times nine of them. Obviously it is way too wide, but uh, I have a plan for that. A lot of times guys will just cut the center one as a strip narrower. Uh, I don't want that. I'd like them to be all uh, the same exact width all the way through. So we're going to uh, go ahead and get started on that. I got an idea or two and we'll see if it works. If you want to see this playlist, it's a very long process. This whole entire trailer from the beginning when I bought it, it was uh, in pretty bad shape, needed a bunch of repairs and then we did a bunch of upgrades. But anyways. Check out the playlist you want, otherwise I'm going into the shop and we'll get going on the wood. So here are nine two by tens that have been laying in my shop drying for a few months now. And they are nine and a quarter across. So being nine and a quarter, if you do the math, nine and a quarter, oh, I did the math, what is it? 83.25. So how are we gonna get 83.25 width a board down to 77 and a half like this we are literally just going to cut a relief a half lap in each side of this the two outside won't have the relief cut it'll just be the the inside joints so we'll have nine boards they're each nine and a quarter 83.25 we're going to take our nine and a quarter inch boards. We're going to cut back three quarters of an inch off each one. The bottom of one face of another. Bottom of one face on another. And they're going to overlap. When those overlap, we are taking out three quarters of an inch at eight joints. Three quarters of an inch times eight is six inches. We needed to take out 5.75. So that leaves in our eight gaps, or eight joints, a gap of 0.03 plenty acceptable to me I could change it a little bit if need be but I'm not gonna I'm okay with that so basically we're taking out just slightly bit more what it end up being a quarter of an inch across eight gaps so or eight joints I'm okay with that so what we're gonna do is get this set up so we can cut out all of these and get it ready to go so I tried one board I tried it with a router and a bit and apparently that's just too much for that. I didn't have the right bit. I did have one that was three quarter in diameter. It would take out three quarters of an inch of material. Problem is it would vibrate and it came loose and I, I tightened it twice and I didn't get great results. So I stopped, I came up with plan B. Plan B was to take my Milwaukee circular saw and make it to where we could have it preset at three quarters of an inch. Because if I took a chalk line measured in three quarters of an inch, made a chalk line down through here, even if I stopped several times, what would happen is this is bowed. You know, none, none, none of this is 100% perfectly straight right now. We're gonna manipulate it to get it as straight as we can. But if I snap a chalk line down here, I will make this a straight line. But what'll happen is the next one, when I chalk it, wherever its imperfections are, it's not going to let it seat tight. I don't want that. So that's why I wanted something with a guide that runs along the edge. So I took my Milwaukee circular saw. This is just a piece of two by six. I took a orbital sander and made that nice and smooth. Just a used piece of junk wood. I drilled two holes there and one in the back. And what that's doing is not only keeping us in line, but the two holes, because I spread them out, they're keeping that from twisting. That's a pretty long screw, by the way. So what we end up doing is I'm able to put my circular saw on the side of this like so. And when I do, it, it gives me a much better plane out here to keep it flat. 
So when I keep it flat, we're getting a better 90 degree angle. So as you can imagine, if the if the blade was coming in here and twisting like this, it would be all kind of candy wampus, and we don't want that at all. We want it to be as tight as we can get it, as straight and accurate. So I run it down that way on the side, and then after that's done, come back up the other way and cut it this way, and I have exactly the same cut both ways because I'm using the same exact measurement on everything. So, um, and I want just slightly over the center. I want to uh, make like a sixteenth a of an inch gap. So a 32nd on this one, 32nd on the other one, so that they have a little room for swell and what have you, or imperfections and whatever. So, um, but it worked out okay. I'll show you what one looks like. So here's our first test piece, and this is what we're after. So it should make for a really nice tight floor, I think. So do you want to explain what you're doing? I haven't, I didn't explain anything because uh, they wouldn't be able to hear me with the saw going on, so. This is the driver's side. It only gets one half lap cut. So I want them to be overlapped, as you can see right here. I've, I've already talked about how I'm doing half lap. <clears throat> But the outside edges only get half lap on one edge. <clears throat> so I want to make sure I get <clears throat> driver side and passenger side cut ahead of time so I don't forget and actually cut a notch on either one. But this is working out pretty well. Not too bad at all. <laughs> Not <to> sawdust. <laughs> this has got to be clean. Who needs an air hose when you have him? I could have fired up the air compressor, but... I just said, who needs an air hose when you have you? <laughs> well, this way allows it to sit flat. It'd be nice to have a handle here. I think I have some um, those metal handles with two mm -hmm. screws somewhere. So. Yeah, somewhere. <clears throat> that would be helpful. That's our life story, somewhere. Yeah. But anyway, this is working out okay. thinner material. This way I got three quarter and three quarter. <clears throat> Just the passing is done. I think for the the small amount of time this takes is well worth it. So this is the original blade that came with this Milwaukee M18 saw and I've used it quite a bit. But I think it's probably uh, better suited for a nice replacement this is my favorite brand of uh, saw blades whether it's circular saw metal cutting chop saw metal cutting circular saw or reciprocating saw I like those Diablos last a long time and they cut good made in Italy last cut we got uh, the rest of these done over here however he was expecting get to get his screws today or tomorrow but now it's like what next week yeah. darn Amazon they're yeah, bad about that you know, <laughs> Amazon. 
Yeah. So when you're looking at it, it says uh, estimated delivery date, this day to this day. As soon as you click pay, it changes. However, so however, my steamer came like four days early, so I was thrilled about that. So as we're doing this, somebody's talking about some other wood project. I need a bed for my strawberries. I He didn't have time last year, so I, I threw them in a, a kiddie pool. <laughs> and they are way too crowded. And the rabbits ate them, the tops of them. And yeah, so I need something with made out of wood with a lid to keep look, you can tell the, difference. the rabbits and stuff out. You can tell the difference in the saw blade. Because look, it's, it's throwing out curls instead of just dust like the other blade was. Mm, yeah. So this is the last one, and I had to go pick this one up from Home Depot because my first test one, the router didn't work for a while and it boogered up and I wasn't happy with it. So um, this was a kind of a $45 stick, well, $35 because the blade was $11. But, uh, yeah. No, we'll use that for my strawberry bed. Yeah, it's not It's wasted. okay, yeah. It's not wasted, it's just, uh, I guess, go in inventory for your project yeah. then then we want to build something else yeah a lot, to build. a lot of people won't be interested in seeing that but yeah that that probably i don't think we'll even put that on on this channel but we're gonna build um all right let's look at that truck so imagine a removable truck camper that can go on that truck 12 feet, 11 or 12 feet long with an overhang up top big enough for a queen bed and able to be removed from this truck, put on my, you guys haven't seen in a long time. <coughs> I have a, <coughs> oh, I have a Ram 5500 full wheel drive with a 84 cab axle. So I'm gonna be able to take it off of this, put it on that, put it on my deuce neck trailer and put it on my step deck trailer so I can use it on whatever. Because we need something that's versatile, because depending on what we're doing, and that would be it. But it will never be on a one-ton, because of course it's going to be too heavy. Um, so the body of the, the camper is going to be 102 wide. So it's going to be way too wide to ever go on a camper. Most truck campers have like a cutout to go in the wheel well, one of the bed sides. We're not doing that. It's going to be, it's going to look like an RV, but removable. So we put it on everything. And it's so. going to be made very well so it doesn't leak like all the rest yeah. of them. Yeah, we're going to do one piece metal roof on top. Um, we're actually probably going to build two. The first one I'm going to think about building out of lumber, not two by tens, because I have to clarify that. It will be 15 million. I know. Yeah. Telling me, My God, if you build it out of two by tens, it will be too heavy. But we're going to think about building it out of lumber. And then this, after we figure out what we like and don't like about it, what we want to change or upgrade or whatever, I want to build the frame out of another one out of aluminum, which means Peter Zilla is coming down to teach me how to weld aluminum. Well, that'd be cool. Get to learn something else. Okay. So if anyone, I guess, is interested in seeing that, let us know. But I, I know this is a truck channel. And channel. People don't. I don't do anything with my channel anymore. I know you don't. But I'm thinking I'll put it on that one because um, it would be more likely to be popular on that channel than mine. Well, there are people, maybe not your people, but there are people that would like to see something like that yes. if they're going to do a project. So If I deviate away from a diesel truck build of any sort, good lord. Well, I mean, that's life, you know. Now I got the trailer back in the shop. I need to make a lid, a wood cover, for all the electrical in here. So, I'm still waiting on my screws, so I figured I'd go ahead and take care of this at the same time. I need to make a battery tray or battery box or something back here. And I just realized I do have a battery box. I just don't know if it'll fit a Group 31 battery because it's plastic. I think, it, I think they fit smaller batteries. But I'm going to go look at it and measure and see. Because if I could put a plastic one on there that covers the battery and covers the connections, I'd be pretty happy about that. So now I'm going to start working on cutting some lumber. i got to cut a couple 2x4s here 
and here and maybe one in the middle and we'll put our wood our wood uh, OSB on top of it and on this side I'm going to make it so it lifts out There was a package came and I didn't even look to see whose it was because I thought it was something that I ordered. But it's <coughs> sawdust. But it's for you. Nice having the door open today. Yeah. For a minute. And if it's what I think it is, I think you're gonna be pretty happy. Because <laughs> uh, every single This has gotta be Bill Speck. I don't this know. Has to be Every single thing. time you use that heat gun, you say, I need to get those, but I keep forgetting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the deflectors for the Milwaukee heat gun. Uh, these hook onto it and guide the, the air. So like this one here, you can put your wire in there for heat shrink. Hmm. This one How more. Nice. Yeah, go grab that gun. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. This one is... Oh. They don't fit. Mm. Dang it. Here. Well, it looks like you can squeeze it tighter on the sides. Yeah, that one I can squeeze. Take one inside the other, maybe. Yeah, that one will hold. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to get that one to work. That's all I need the most. Can't you squeeze it? It won't go underneath there. I'd just take a flat disc to the very ends of it. Then it would go in there and it would hold it tight too. Ah, oh, is that it? Yeah, that's in yeah, there. Just operator error. <laughs> yeah, so I can bend that up tighter because I would like it to kind of loop. Mm -hmm. I'll probably take my handbrake and put like a bend here and make it a little stiff. Oh yeah, it's so much better. Because then you can get it constantly. This one might be good too because it'll let it lay down in there. Oh yeah. That's a daisy. <laughs> That's got to be Bill Speck, isn't it? I don't know, honey. There's no, no. And it came right to our house. It, it has, yeah. So it has to be Bill. So Bill, <laughs> thanks again. It's like the most thoughtful person ever. I, I had I'd wanted to order this and I just kept forgetting. I, I, it'd be the last thing on my mind when I was going in the house from the shop and by the time I made it to the shop, old age was taken over and I'd forgotten. So, um, put these two together so I know where they're at. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, thank you. That was very nice. I just put a little thumb hole in here so we can lift these up so it's easy to get to. This old scrap OSB we had laying around, so, you know, now you can, we'll keep the remote in here for the winch, plug in one, so we just, I just took two by fours and laid them up like this, they're actually fit in here pretty good, I don't even think I need this down, I think I'm just going to leave it like that, that can go in that way, this side, 
access to the line. I left it a little loose because we're going to paint it, and uh, this is not exactly straight. The, the, the toolbox itself bows in at the, the middle right here and right there. It's kind of goofy, but somebody's going to paint this for us so it won't absorb water and condensation. But that ought to do. Hey? Mm -hmm. You alright? Who's painting it for us? Uh, that'd be you. Oh, okay. When I say we, I mean you. Oh. I got a little sanding to do there. We're not going to hook up this remote yet because I haven't got what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm looking for a particular remote. Um, I want to set it up so we have a quick connect inside here. And I don't. I was going to put like a a four pin trailer connector out here I just don't want anything out in the weather that's going to corrode so I think I'm going to use like a trailer plug here a four pin and just put it on here and use run the trailer wiring I guess to a remote I just I haven't found what I'm looking for so I just took some heat shrink and covered the ends of this off and I used that and I was able to do all three of them them uh, piece of heat shrink at the same time and it took about the what it used to take to just do one of them. So definitely, definitely need this if you're going to run uh, heat, doing it for heat, solder, solder, heat shrink. Yeah, that. Anyways, my wife's going to get her primer. She's going to get this all ready to paint. And I'm going to move on to the decking because my screws came today. the front too so we have weld there that way this won't lay on the weld it'll lay on the metal all righty we'll see if it fits all right we're getting our boards in and that relief on the bottom is because there's a weld right here so we're letting it give us a relief so the boards will all sit flat here as well as down here however just like we expected our boards have bowed from sitting changing moisture what have you not the end of the world we'll get it we'll probably take a ratchet strap squeeze them together when we're ready i'd like to fit them all the way across before i decide uh because to pull them tight because i may i think i'm gonna end up with like a quarter inch gap too wide and i'm gonna use that to my advantage and when i set the gaps here Slide out here. Keep going. Out, 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 out. Now put it in. Slide across.
Get it. It's good. It's good. Well, not really. It it's just both. It's both. We'll, we'll tighten them all up and we get them all in. So we have one board left. But this wire runs through there. So he's cutting a relief for it in this last. I had a plunge router this size, or a bit for my, I have a plunge router. I had a bit this size, I would have done it that way. But I don't, so I'm just gonna have to do what we can do with what we got. slightly past so that this wouldn't be an issue in here where, where I'm not able to get it clean. I don't know, I'm kidding, it'll be clean. I can live with that. The last board is a little bowed. These were too, so we, you know, ratcheted them to get all the gaps out. And then he's just fitting the last one. I think we're there. I think we are there. Not bad. The front's pretty decent except for one of them. And I got one that hopefully I can move forward. We were tapping it and I tapped a little too hard. I don't know if we're going to get it in there or not. We'll see. So I thought about this overnight and I think what I'm going to do is just leave it just the way it is and I'm not I'm not going to try and squeeze everything super tight. I'm concerned that as this gets wet and it begins to swell, it might push against the edges and maybe curl up and I don't want that. So I think what we're going to do is let it relax and if we have some gaps here and there, um, I'm just going to go with it. I'm not going to be overly concerned with it. It's still just a trailer. I have to keep telling myself that. 
say this DeWalt bit does not work as well as that Milwaukee until I broke the Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. Already got one road done here along the front. And I'm going this way because the way this is made, we want this one down before this one goes down because this overlaps this one. So we're working that way. And I'm drilling them and screwing them at that time so that we know they're flat as we go back. And it won't move. and push it down in there so it's not. So I bought a new clip for this from a place called Just Clips because Milwaukee apparently where I was looking I ordered them and they were out of stock. So I got this other brand and it lasted a couple weeks. Plus it just didn't fit right. It like, never did. You it, had to struggle to get the it was sockets tight. off. Very tight. I don't expect to be able to get this all done with one bit. So that's my last bit I have. That size. I'm using 9 30 seconds. And I'm making it just below the surface and then. We'll check it again afterwards um, because as we use it the first time, it'll probably, some of these boards will sink a little bit maybe and settle. I was just humming along and everything going really, really nice and smooth. Only two problems. One is I went to put my board in there and I got a little too carried away tapping it in place with a hammer that I probably shouldn't have. And I broke the flange on it, so I'm going to go get another board. We're going to get that one cut. And that's the one that needs a relief for the wire, of course. Um, and then I broke both my drill bits. These are 964 drill bits I'm using. I had two, one Milwaukee, one DeWalt. Broke them both. And I broke them both where, um, where something welds into, and I got on drilling through and I got right on the side of it and it kicked the bit and snapped them. So I can't fault either one of them bits at all. It was just a circumstance of what we were drilling through. And me not knowing what was there, I could have moved the, the hole over a little bit had I thought about it a little bit more. But anyways, off to Home Depot. Let's get another board and some drill bits. I think I'll get another saw blade. I was using this to cut the ends with and I had to swap over to the Bosch because my saw blade my milwaukee is spent i we use that one i think uh on the uh chicken coop that built the whole chicken coop and i don't know how many things before that but oh well i just got back from home depot searching through their lumber and it is all all green and wet this thing weighs probably three times what the other ones do um so if i put this in here as green as it is and green meaning there's still moisture in it not rainwater but actual moisture from the tree itself if i put it in there it's going to shrink and when it shrinks i'm going to have big gaps and i don't want that so we're going to run to home or lowe's now and see if they have anything drier because this is uh yeah it is what it is i don't want to put this in here just for sake of saying the trailer's done because then Later, I'm going to be pulling all them screws out and changing that board out. So let's go to Lowe's and see what they got. Since that was so wet, we went to Home Depot or Lowe's and we found two that were very, very dry and in good shape. So we bought two. That way, if I make another mistake, <laughs> let's hope I don't, that we're not screwed and have to push this off. So. Now we gotta get this one all cut up like the one that used to go right here. 
So I'm done drilling all the holes and this is the first project I've used this Milwaukee drill on and I love it. It is the 2904. Yeah, 2904-20 would be just the drill. 2904-22 is the, the kit, the blow motor case, the charger and the two batteries and the handle and, and these things here. Um, love it, absolutely love it. Brand new battery, five amp hour battery. Uh, we did almost 150 holes, and we only used uh, two bars off that battery. I think that was pretty good. So I'm very, very pleased with this. And uh, all my screws went in well, went in real good. We used 5 16 fasteners, trailer deck screws. You could probably use quarter inch. Uh, I chose 5 16 because I knew I was using a wide board, and I knew that I didn't want to put three screws in it, so I decided to go just a little bit bigger than, than standard. I don't think it matters. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with how, how the deck turned out within reason. There's some things I don't like, and I'll talk about that now. Uh, when I had this apart, originally this trailer only had a cross member right in this area, and it went between where the C channel is. You can see the tongue comes back here and goes to the out of the frame. Well, there's no cross member here on either side, and I didn't put one in. I didn't think it was a big deal until I go to put screws in. Now I'm not happy about it. I wish I had. Not a big deal. Once this thing is dirty, I'll never even think about that again. Um, now, would, would I... Would I do the half lap deck again? Most definitely. I would do this on every single trailer I ever do because I like how it tightens up the joints. Now, understand, we're probably still going to shrink a little bit once it sits in the sunshine outside in warm weather, and I'm okay with that, but we have that half lap. So not only did we make it to where almost the majority of our boards are the same width except for the two outside ones, they're slightly wider but we made a stronger floor. Um, would I would I screw down to every cross member again? Most definitely. Is it necessary? Certainly not. Most trailer manufacturers, they don't do anything in the back. They do this one. They would have skipped this one. They would have hit this one. They would have skipped that one. They would have done this one. They would have skipped this one and done this one and ran a piece of angle iron across there and called it a day. I like it tied into every cross member because I think it's a stronger deck. I think when you tie everything together like this, um, it's like a house of cards. Every little extra bit you add of strength, you're just doing that. As far as the trailer overall, uh, would I do this project again? No. No, I most certainly would not. Um, and I'll tell you, here's the reasons. We fought this last board here, and I had to skim off the outside edge because if you guys remember, everybody saw this trailer from the beginning, this trailer is not square. This front leg here, right at that upright, right here, it takes a hard kick out. It is not square. And you can see how the upright right here tilts in at the top and out at the bottom. And the same thing over here. This side kicks that way at the bottom and out at the top. And I have fought that the entire build everything was a problem because of a lot of problems because of that i'll say so would i do this again certainly not i would just go buy the steel and i would build it from scratch the way i want it to build because for the amount of time and effort i have in this trailer taking apart finding more things wrong more wrong and then actually basically almost rebuilding the total trailer i could have built something that i really preferred for less I usually don't talk about money in these projects because, you know, most everything I have is for sale. Um, we have no intention of selling this trailer. I currently have $5,600, and I'm not counting the extra lumber that'll get used for something else. I'm talking about actually used on this. I have 50, almost $5,700 in this trailer. Um, is that too much? I guess it depends on, on your... On, on what you think um, I'm happy with it it'll do everything that we have intended for it we are done with the trailer right now I have to put the fair lead back on but I need to get bolts someone had 3 8 bolts and 7 16 holes so I'll get a couple bolts and get that fixed up and then the next thing you'll probably see on this trailer will be when we start building what we're going to use 
these two uprights for. And uh, I'm not going to go into that. It'll be just more time on the video, but that'll be next. But for all intents and purposes right now, it's finished. We're going to go set it in the other part of the building and uh, or in another building. We're going to let all this dry up. My wife's going to decide if she wants to stay in the floor or not. And uh, it should be ready to go. I have to do something with a battery box here. I'm just not decided, so I'm not doing anything right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project and uh, this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.